Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Wendy Dillard here. Today is Tuesday, August the 28th, 2018, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, your second daily dose of happy for the day. And we're working from a tent, so to speak. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the office where I normally do the podcast from is right outdoors from a truck that has a carpet cleaning system attached to it because they're cleaning the carpets upstairs. So if I were working from the office, you'd hear a in the background for the entire podcast. And in the uh, interest of a clean sounding podcast, I am now mobile. I have moved to the other side of the house with my laptop. I'm, I'm hand holding my mic instead of using my stand. So as Wendy likes to say, everything works out. <laughs> I love it. Everything's always working out for me. That's right. Sometimes you have to help it work out. (laughs) Well, but there's a lot to be said about our adaptability and our attitude and our response to the circumstances that we are given. True. Yes, very true. And, you know, you recognize your circumstances were such that it's like, Hmm, adaptability adaptability is required. Mm-hmm. What else is possible? Yep. And you adjust it accordingly. Pretty much, yeah. Because it was it was either that or else a dull hum in the background, and I know nobody would like yeah. that. So you know, yeah, you adapt, so, right? I mean, when you look at it from an attitude of nothing went wrong because everything's always working out for me, then the idea spark as to what you can do to make adjustments, and everything always works out. <laughs> I love it. What a great attitude. And, well, and, and I was listening to Abraham the other day, and I was hearing them talk to a workshop participant, and they were really bringing that point home of how everything always works out. And he had said how he had had a dream, and something occurred in the dream, but when he woke up, kind of, what his memory was or how it felt was it's all going to be okay. And he said, so I knew it'd be okay because it's all going to be okay. And Abraham made a really big point in saying, we want to share something with you that's even deeper than it's all going to be okay. Hmm. And this was a really cool distinction. I'd never heard them talk about before. They said, first of all, Um, Because, oh, I know, he said that in the dream, like either a spirit or an angel or somebody came to him and shared a sentence with him, but he couldn't remember the exact sentence that was told to him in the dream. And he said it was something like, it's all going to work out, or no, it's all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And they said, we will tell you exactly what that angel spoke to you. (laughs) And what the the angel's words were, everything always works out for me. Ah. And they said that may sound like the same message, but it's entirely different. And here's why. And this is the distinction that I got really excited about. Mm. When you say the phrase, it's all going to be okay, that's coming from the awareness that it wasn't okay. True. But now you're choosing to focus on it being okay. And that has a piece of negative vibration in it. Mm -hmm. Where... Mm -hmm. Everything always works out for me comes from the vibration of everything always works out for me. It comes from pure positive energy. There's no negative vibration whatsoever within that thought process or that sentence. And I went, wow, that's really cool. Hmm. So it's not that the words matter, but the energy behind them does. Yeah, the feeling behind it's quite different. Yeah, and this workshop participant, as he was sitting there, he really, and as he went on to other stuff, you could tell Abraham really nailed it because he really was coming from a place of stuff goes wrong, but somehow it can turn out okay for me. (laughs) And I went, wow, isn't it amazing how sometimes we don't even realize we're focused on something with just a slightly negative vibration And really, that slightly negative vibration can really make the difference between you having smooth sailing versus rocky waters in the process of getting A to Z. I mean, when you think about it, we are, as human beings, very well skilled in settling. Settling for maybe not as good as we'd want it to be, but we'll settle for pretty good. And that's what that is, that's Mm -hmm. settling. What you just described. I mean, I hadn't thought about it in those terms, but you're right. That's exactly what's going on. It's a settling thing. And 
Yeah, I mean, so... Oh, go ahead. Well, and so interestingly for, you know, what you just experienced, um, you know, you had a couple words before the, the podcast started that I sensed that there was a little bit of negativity in it, which reminded me of this workshop participant saying, mm. well, it's all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know you, whatever, I can't remember the exact word you said, but I, I know, immediately but... like, like flipped it around because that's what I do. But, <laughs> but you, but you were accurate. Yeah. You, you were right on because that's exactly what was going on. I mean, I was dealing with the situation. I was dealing with it successfully, but there was a little piece of me that was like pissed off I had to deal with it at all. And I think that's what you were sensing. Yeah. And so if for no other reason, just to help you get really aligned to what's going on in your world. Nothing went wrong. That's true. Yeah. Not a thing. Not a thing went wrong. Um, and so <laughs> that tells, now that will lead into what my day has been. Well, we, so we, we have both of I us have, actually, cause I also have another story that I'll tell after your story that fits in perfectly okay, with this cool. theme. Yeah. Well, so go ahead. you said, well, what should our topic be? And I said, just make it walk away. <laughs> yeah, right. Cause, cause that's what it always is. Trust me. <laughs> and it does every time. So, so I had my day planned out, and the only two scheduled things I had was a call at 12 noon my time and then the podcast with you at 3 central time. Mm-hmm. And so 15 minutes before the call, I get an, um, an, uh, an email from the person I'm supposed to have the call with, and she said, is it possible to switch this to tomorrow? I'm in a place that basically doesn't have enough cell service for us to have a continual call. And so I said, okay, no problem. But I had literally been planning everything I did this morning around that. <laughs> and so there was just a moment of like, oh, I wish I would have known earlier. Right. But then I read her email and I went, she, she didn't know there was going to be no cell service. And of I went, course. oh, well. So my response was, well, what else is, is possible for today? What else is going to happen? Good response. And so I started moving through some stuff. And um, one of the things I've been working on is uh, – renewing my my passport i don't know that i have anything i don't have anything planned right now but i just kind of felt the nudge because my passport expires in november go ahead and take care of it now and when you need it it'll already be done i'm like cool i love it when i get to be proactive i don't like waiting till the end so i'm like cool 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 got the photos taken the other day it was now a matter of just making sure i put everything in the envelope correctly so i'm processing that Meanwhile, my little sister's over and she's doing some stuff for me at my house. And she comes up to where I was and she said, hey, your back tire is really, really low. Mm. And I said, huh. Okay, well, I had just gotten this new tire pump for something else. I said, would you see if it'll work on a car tire and just see if it could add some air? So she tried and she said, "It." I could tell that it was adding air, but then I looked, and she took a picture of it. There was a big screw yeah. in the sidewall of the tire. Yeah, that'll do and it. And I went, okay. So I went, okay, no big deal. And I looked at my clock, and I realized sh- this happened during the time that normally I would have been on that call that had been scheduled for today. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I had a sense of no big deal. I'll just head over to my local discount tire. It'll all be taken care of. And I was looking at the clock going, okay, I have plenty of time. You know, I, I knew the, when the podcast was. And so I headed off with the sense of whatever it is, it's fine. And I get there and, you know, I'm reading all the signs while I'm in line. And I'm like, okay, if it's on a sidewall, they can't replace, they can't fix it. It has to be replaced. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. So instead of it being a free replacement, you know, it'll probably cost me money. And I went, okay, obviously inner being knows all about that doesn't is never never seems to be concerned about money (laughs) (laughs) it's funny how that is so i go up sure enough it needs to be replaced they told me the amount and i went okay they said we don't have your tire but we have this other one i said does it matter they said no i said okay so i said how long will it be and he said 45 minutes to an hour and i said okay so i go and i sit down and i had brought this book with me so i start reading and it's about me in the process of building my new business and so I was getting some really key insights and I had this sense like don't read any more because you don't want to lose the last thing you read you want that to just kind of sink in okay and so I looked at my watch and I went huh well I'm getting within about I'd been here for 40 minutes 
And so I kind of got up and I looked and I saw where my tire, my car was in line and it looked like it was going to be done pretty soon. And I take my glasses, put everything in my purse. And literally I'm at the point that I'm like ready to go as my car gets pulled up onto the, their driveway. Nice. <laughs> I was like, how perfectly timed. Yeah. So I get in my car and now I'm like, I need to go to the post office to mail this passport renewal. And I go, and there's a long line of people there. Uh-huh. And I just said, I wonder what else is possible. You know, worse comes to worse, I can just abort, you know. But I'm like, I had a sense, no. All, everything is t- orchestrated on your behalf. Okay. But, okay, everything yeah. is always working out for me, so let's watch how this happens. <laughs> so sure enough, I get it. Finally, it's my turn, and discussion happens. I pay for the, I don't know, whatever delivery requested process you know and I head out and I look at my watch and I'm like okay 15 minutes before the podcast but in my terms that's 10 minutes before I need to call in (laughs) I'm like I'm about 10 minutes from the house (laughs) so I'm I'm racing home well not really racing I'm driving home and I just have this awareness everything always works out for me like somehow I didn't have to have my car today. I could have put this all off to tomorrow when I didn't have scheduled activities. But somehow it felt like this was the day to take care of the tire and it was the day to take care of the passport. So okie dokie. So I'm just literally turning into the alley to pull into my driveway. And as I put the turn signal on, one of my dashboard lights goes off saying that your right turn signal lamp is no longer working. And I just laughed, Walt. (laughs) And it wasn't like, oh, my God, what a cascading day of one bad thing after another. It was, what else is possible? Because everything else, <laughs> everything is always working out for me. So I went, well, I don't have time to take care of that right now. But now I know there's something else that requires addressing. And it's like, and that's okay, too. And, you know, dialing in and calling you and whatnot. It's like, we didn't miss a beat. No. You know, we're not late. No. I didn't cause us to be late. But the whole time there was just this knowingness of I'm aligned. And when something, quote, goes wrong, like a tire needing to be replaced, that's not wrong. That's maybe the world's socialized perception, but it's not mine. It's not my perception. My perception is, you know what, that tire was five years old. Because I drive so little, I was already told a year ago that I may need to replace my tires before anything goes wrong with them, just because rubber doesn't last that long. So I'm like, okay, got one of them replaced. Yay, check that one check off the list, three to go (laughs) for the next couple of years. But it's like, it's all good. And even as I was coming home, I thought, I've missed my normal window of opportunity to eat lunch. And I thought, I am really hungry, and I don't want to have my stomach growling throughout the whole show and have me, you know, like pre, um, what's the word, Um, focus. I I don't want to be focused on, you know, I'd rather be eating than on this podcast. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, and I do. And the thought, you have these protein bars in the refrigerator. Grab one. So I ate about two-thirds of one while you and I were talking, getting ready for the show, But it's like that took care of my tummy, so my tummy is not rumbling. And I guess my point is everything that's important to me, the universe already has worked out. And so long as I stay in this place of being in the knowingness that everything always works out for me, it does always work out for me. And I don't see any of it as what went wrong, but what went right. As a matter of fact, remember on the last show, I was telling you about how I was driving behind a car where their their tire looked kind of wobbly and right, yeah. we got to the stoplight and I got to tell them about it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I also have this garden cart um, and I pumped up all the, all the tires the other day and one of them won't pump because it literally had dry rot. And so my little sister, one of her projects for the day was to take that wheel off so I could go get a new one. And I just laughed with her. And I said, you know, the universe had actually been preparing me for the tire issue I now have because I had two other tire issues come very full into my awareness. And I didn't really even think to check my own personal tires. And yet when I got out of the car the other day, the last time I drove my car, I looked at one of the other wheels 
And I just had this sense, check for air in your tires. And I kind of just threw it in the back of my mind, like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> but, you know, my inner being already knew this is something that ne was needing some attention. And was trying to get my attention. And I didn't pay attention. Mm. I looked at that other lady's tire issue as her issue. Mm -hmm. And I looked at my little garden cart wheel and I hadn't quite figured out what that was about yet. I really hadn't asked any questions. But as I was heading out to get my tire taken care of today, I went and asked my inner being. I said, were you trying to give me some messages with those other two tire issues? And I got a like, yes. And I went, but I didn't pay attention, did I? And I got, nope, you didn't. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that doesn't make anything wrong. It didn't make me bad. I'm not judging myself as, gosh, Wendy, what's your problem? Mm -hmm. But what it showed me is just the beauty in how my inner being has been guiding me to let me know in advance that there was a problem, something I needed to look at. And even when I didn't pay attention to the signals, today's escapade, if you will, in finding out that like there was a problem and going and getting the tire replaced, it still all felt like it was all smooth and synchronistic. Which is good. Which shows me there's multiple ways that the universe tries to get our attention. And if we miss it the first time, don't worry, they'll send another signal. And if you miss it the second time, don't worry, they'll send you another signal. I kept getting signals until I finally got one and it came through my sister and she happened to see the tire. I mean, it wasn't something I asked her to look at. She just happened to go in my garage to get something else, happened to notice the tire looking flat. And I'm like, wow, it is so cool that the universe cares so much about even these little teeny details. And I also have a belief about car issues, What's which that? is, if, if a car problem is going to occur, it's going to happen on my driveway. <laughs> I love it. While I'm in, while I'm in, well, and this was in my garage, which that's close enough. Okay. But it happens while I'm at home when I have the ease of taking care of it. Because here's why. It's hot in Texas. Mm. I don't like to be stuck outside in the heat waiting for a tow truck to come. I don't blame you. Do I have, do I have a towing service? Yes, I do. But you know what? I'd rather call them up from the comfort of my air-conditioned home and say, hey, I need my car to be towed to place XYZ, and I get to stay in my air-conditioned home until they come and do it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm never inconvenienced. So that's my belief, that if there's going to be any issue with my car, it happens while I'm at home, where I have the ease of taking care of it. And in this case, before I went, I pumped up with my little new tire uh, pump, air pump thing, as much as it could handle, and then it wouldn't go any more over 20 pounds of air. And I, I just said, will I make it okay till I get to the tire place? And I got a yes. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> because everything's always working out for me. <laughs> it's a cool mantra. And, and what, what you've basically managed to do is you found a way to stay in alignment, regardless of what happens, and to do what Abraham has talked about on a number of different situations and a number of different occasions, actually, where they talk about trying to find a way to appreciate even the stuff that you don't normally appreciate. Because that's an art. That's, that, that's an art form. And, and you found a way to do it very, very consistently using that one particular catchphrase, everything is always working out for me. And I have practiced that phrase multiple times through multiple situations and I can honestly say I know I once upon a time was where that workshop participant was where I came into it with a negative thing and then turned it around mm. and I can honestly say there was no negative in this at all today it was all like an adventure like okay let's see how this is going to come through for me because the universe always has my back and I know everything always works out for me. The only question is how. Well, you and could so you, you could have seen it as a negative. I mean, you, you had to replace a tire. You had to spend money on that. You could have seen that as a negative, but you didn't. But I didn't. That was not even my first response. Yeah. My first response was the, who? I wonder what's possible. I wonder how <laughs> this is all going to work out for me. Because everything does all work out for me. Mm -hmm. and, 
So yes, I agree. I could have gone there. Sure. But what I'm saying is I've practiced this phrase and so many times it's such a powerful belief within me that my first response was one of excitement and who wonder how this is all going to turn out because it <laughs> always turns out so good and it gets me kind of happy and excited. Well, it also gets you looking and for a, what the possible new solution is going to be because when you're in that yeah, place of I mean, wondering, was, well, how am I going to pay for the tire or why do I have to be so inconvenienced? I, I had other things I wanted to do. You start going down that road. You'll never actually notice when things work out because you're so busy with the other. That, that, I think that's what your main point's been. Yeah. Yeah. And like when he told me, he said, well, the tire that you have on your car, we don't have in stock. And I went, okay. And he said, but we do have this other one. I said, okay. I said, is that a problem? He said, no, as long as it's the right size. And I said, okay. And he goes, let me go make sure I, I really have it. And he came back. He said, yep, we've got it. He said, do you want us to take care of it? I said, okay, yes, please. But I was in such an agreeable, like I knew standing there, whatever he said, he was going to have a solution for me. I had such a a knowing and an awareness. I mean, there have been times in the past when the tire I wanted, they didn't have, or they didn't even have one that fit my car. Um, and I'd have to wait a couple hours or I'd have to come back the next day. But I absolutely knew whatever I needed, it was going to be handled. And I would get back home in time to do the podcast and the tire issue would be a non-issue. I just knew. And how did I know? Because I've been believing in this Everything always works out for me. I've been saying it like a mantra. I live it. I breathe it. I practice it. And when you do it with such continualness, you get the result that I have. Well, plus, not only is it a question of practicing it, when you practice it and you practice it with the the devotion that you practice it, because it's been very devoted the way you've been doing it, you start noticing stuff you didn't notice before. I mean, the stuff was already there. It was always there. But now you're noticing it. You're noticing how everything works out for you. So that your belief is building not only because you keep repeating it, but because the experience is reinforcing it. And you're noticing the experience that you wouldn't have noticed before. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true. By the way, I had a similar... A similar event happened today. Yeah, I was just going to say, and now it's your turn. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, about uh, two weeks ago... Um, I do the bookkeeping on Louise's gardening business. And about two weeks ago, I noticed a transaction that came through the bank that shouldn't have been there. It didn't make any sense. It was somebody um, taking a $100 withdrawal, but they were doing it from an ATM machine in Georgia. We're in Connecticut. <laughs> I mean, there's nobody in the business in Georgia. So I knew it was not a valid transaction. And uh, long and short of it is uh, somebody had hacked our debit card and we had to cancel that card and order another one, which we did. And it came in a few days back. And so we have the new card. Well, over this past weekend, three more transactions hit. And these three transactions, normally I wouldn't really freak out about transactions, but we'd had that previous experience. And I saw these three transactions and they were, you know how when they appear on a bank statement, they, they tell you like, you know, who the transaction's from, uh, maybe mm-hmm. the location, all that kind of stuff. The information about who the transaction with was with was all gibberish. It was all nonsense information. Oh. And at the end of it, there's like a little notation saying that it came through PayPal. Well, I thought about that for a second, and I realized my wife's gardening business account doesn't have a PayPal connection. So mm. where was that coming from? And I'm looking at the transactions, and they have these all, just absolute nonsense names. And there are three of them, and they total about three hundred dollars. And we just already taken a the one hundred dollar hit. And you know, it was like, well, what's going on here? So we called the bank, and I won't go through the whole story, but the long story turned into a short story, is that the bank person uh, informed us of something that we didn't know. And I don't even know if this is just true for our bank or if this is true for all banks, but it was certainly an education for me. Apparently. If you have a business account with a debit card attached to it, you don't get the same kind of protection you get from a credit card. You get it if you have a debit card right. attached to a personal account, but not to a business account. Is that true for you also? Yes. It is. I'm, so maybe well, that's I don't universal. Know about the details. I, do, I don't know about the details, but I do remember reading recently, because I have a business credit card that I use all the time, mm. that 
I want to be certain that my personal things are somewhere else because there are different levels of protection. Yeah. Well, I wasn't aware of that one. So I don't know if that's going to be true for all banks. If it is, then our, our search for another bank that has better protection on a debit card will be fruitless. But nevertheless, the point is we learned this piece of information and we realized, well, that means we're going to be out 400 bucks for all, from all these transactions. We didn't like that too much. Oh, because they were all debit transactions? They were all debit cards. Yeah. And the idea that, that first of all, the, the first card had been hacked and that transaction had gone through, but then we just got a new card and that one got hacked within a couple of days of receiving it. I mean, that was starting to freak us out, hmm. you know? And then right. finally, we, we, so we're going through the process of canceling out the second debit card and the bank officer was informing us about this policy, which we weren't aware of. I, I, I thought all the cards were covered and apparently they weren't. So, okay, well then we got to, rethink our strategy here. How are we going to do this? Maybe we need to get another business credit card so we can do all the transactions through that and get the protection. Um, but as we're doing that, something stopped me. And I'm going to say it was a message from my inner being. But it's like all of a sudden the, the cogs clicked and the, you know, the gears mm -hmm. mesh and, and a, a new solution came out. And I said, wait a minute. I bought an iPad on eBay for Louise over the weekend, and I bought two accessories. We have three transactions here with gibberish names on them. What if those are eBay transactions? And I looked, and sure enough, they were. They were eBay transactions. <laughs> now, why it didn't say eBay, I couldn't possibly tell you. But the bottom line was that they were perfectly valid transactions. I just didn't recognize them because of the gibberish they were written in. Oh, so they weren't fraudulent. They were not fraudulent. They were legitimate. And so, any, any of them? Because there were four of them. Well, the four, they were all illegitimate? The very first one from way back, that was illegitimate. That was definitely a hacker. Okay, okay. But these three from over the weekend were legitimate. And so I thought about yeah. this whole cycle, and I said to myself, so what was all this about? And I finally realized this was the universe running us through a scenario to inform us of something we were not aware of, that debit cards through this bank didn't have protection on a business account. So we didn't actually suffer a loss. We just went through that whole thing so we could learn this piece of information. I thought, that's a pretty clever that's way to fast. do it. Well, you know, we, all, we know that the universe uses the path of least resistance. Right. And so sometimes, I mean, think about it. If your inner being said... Hey, read the fine print yeah. on the document that's so small you can't read it without precept <laughs> readers. <laughs> you probably would go, yeah, 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 they're all, they're all the same because that's what your belief was already. Yeah, pretty much. So by having to actually speak with a representative at your credit card company, that's how you learned that new piece of information. That, right. that is fascinating. Yeah. So now we're, as the old phrase goes, uh, forewarned is forearmed. We're forearmed. So now we know we got to kind of change our strategy about how we do cards when we're transacting business. Because we use the cards all the time, and we have to, just because you know, we're, we're ordering mulch, we're ordering compost, we're buying supplies, we're doing this, and we're doing all these things that, you know, you, doing it with cash just wouldn't work. Doing it with a check would be crazy. You know, so you have to have a card. Um, but now we know, okay, now we got to work it around so that instead of using a debit card, we're using a credit card and then pay the credit card each month. You know, it is so fascinating, Walt, just to have the awareness and, and, and recognize all the different ways that the universe tries to get our attention yeah. to send us messages. Makes me wonder how um, many previous messages I missed. <laughs> you talked about how you, oh, you missed a few few messages. I, I must have missed a few because, I mean, this one was, this is like, hey, wake up. It was that kind of a message, you know? I think we miss lots of messages because I believe the universe is attempting to con. con uh, converse with us on such a continual, regular basis. But if we don't know how to interpret mm. what comes to us, exactly. no big deal. They'll find another way. Mm -hmm. They'll find yet another way. And if we miss that one, they'll find yet another way. Like, wow. Yeah. Because, you know, something I mentioned many shows ago um, that I, I love Outlook. I love Outlook email and I love Outlook calendaring. Right. So I want to find a way now that I'm no longer with the job and I'm running my own business, I really would love to use Outlook because those are tools that I, I like a lot. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time f figuring out all sorts of different things. And so far, nothing has really worked. 
but I, that hasn't stopped me and I haven't gotten discouraged at all. I'm like, okay, well, just because this method didn't work, what else is possible? And what other thing do I not know about? Let's, you know, what, uh, and my constant thing is what other question can I Google? Mm-hmm. Sure. Because just because I've been Googling a lot in order to get some information, if I'm not asking the right question, I'm not going to get the right answer. So one of the things I was highly focused on the other day is how I wish, like if I had an IT guy, my I could ask my IT guy, okay, here's something that I'm trying to make happen, mm-hmm. but am I going down a road that like the technology won't even do that? <laughs> You know, but if I had a tech guy who knew all those answers, they would say, okay, I understand what you're trying to accomplish, but you can't do it through this method, but here's how you can do it. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I had kind of stepped away from the whole Outlook thing for about two days. And last night I was at my computer doing something and I went, you know, let me try a different question. And so I don't even know now what the question was, but it was something like, can I sync you know, cloud-based outlook.com with my desktop outlook. And I can't tell you that it was that exact question that I got the answer, but you know how you get all sorts of different possibilities when you Google Mm -hmm. that you can click on. Right. And I clicked on an article where there was a person that I swear it was like, he was exactly tailor-made for me. (laughs) But he, he said something like, I know a lot of people are trying to do blah, blah, blah. But if they were sitting in front of me, what I would tell them, first of all, is that cannot be done. I'm like, oh, my God, the thing I'm trying to do, he just (laughs) told me that cannot be done. And I just laughed. I went, thank you, universe. And then he goes on to say, but if you're trying to do this, most likely what you're wanting to do is have synchronization with your calendar so that you can get your calendar from any device. And I went, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. (laughs) And he said, right now, Google Calendar actually has the best functionality for that level of synchronicity. And I just sat back and I laughed because I had tried to use Google Calendaring, never even thinking about trying to synchronize it with all my devices. But my previous (laughs) experience was I don't like it Ah. because I only tried it from my phone. Well, I didn't know except from reading this article, you could get a desktop version of Google Calendar. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it had all the functionality that Outlook had. Uh-huh. And I laughed, and I went, wow. And I went to bed last night, Walt, with the sense of, well, my calendaring issue is solved. Yeah. I now have Google synchronization between my laptop, my PC, my tablet, my cell phone. For instance, while I was out and about, the a, a notification went off to let me know the podcast is coming up and I need to be dialing in soon. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I got an email notification. I got a, a phone notification. I went, this is even better than Outlook. Because if I'm out and about, it wouldn't do it to my phone. It would only do it to my PC. And I'm like, oh. there was a better solution out there that I didn't know about. But by pressing in, by saying, hey, inner being, I know that because I have the wherewithal to have this desire, I know you can produce the results. But what I didn't realize is I was so focused on it had to come through Outlook that I missed the bigger picture, which is it doesn't have to come through Outlook. I just thought it had to. Mm -hmm. And the universe provide a different avenue for me to get the essence of what I desired through a different platform. And I'm like, huh, it just made me laugh because everything's always working out for me. I was just and noticing that. The the, uh, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I was noticing that uh, basically what you've managed to do is you've, you've managed to engage in the inner being technical support program, which is a free subscription. <laughs> Who would have thought you could have <laughs> inner being help desk? <laughs> But you're right. That's exactly what I have. That's it. (laughs) And, you know, I will tell you just as a kind of a uh, update on me now being in my new career. There is a feeling that I don't think I've ever experienced before. Really? And 
yeah, the feeling has to do with non-pressure, non-stress. That's the negative side. The positive side, complete trust and knowing that everything's working out for me. That's really good. I mean, yeah. And so every day I ask, okay, what do I need to be doing today? What's like, what's on today's agenda? And there've been a couple days I have just been sheer exhausted, physically tired. And I think it has a lot to do with emotionally being drained sure, and mentally being drained from all of the stuff that came previous. And in the past, I would have felt guilt. Like I can't just sleep today. You know, my income depends on me getting out there and hustling. And instead I'm getting just sleep. That's what your body needs. Mm-hmm. Well, Saturday I would have, I would uh, judge the day as, oh, I did nothing but sleep. But do you know what? I read a business book from page one to the very end. I don't, I, I rarely read a book in a day. <laughs> <laughs> New habit. But I'd read and then I'd take a nap and then I'd read and I'd take a nap. And I was focused on, I'm taking so much time to sleep. And that's where in the past the guilt would have entered in. Sure, yeah. And this was like, and I was really hearing my inner being saying, no, this is the no guilt zone. This is, (laughs) you're doing exactly what you need to do. One, you're creating new information with your brain because you're reading. But two, you're also refreshing your entire being by taking naps because that's what you need right now. And so I slept a lot on Saturday and on Sunday. And I thought, okay, Monday's when I get back to work. You know, that's the beginning of the work week. Mm -hmm. I I slept almost all. I didn't sleep. I would say I didn't do work-related activities. I just still felt really tired. And it wasn't until about 8 or 9 o'clock last night I started to feel the Wendy come back. And I've been asking my inner being, like, what's going on? This is a long time for me to be resting. And I've sensed, and you need it, and you're yeah. not done. Mm. And I went, really? I'm like, no, you're not done. And I went, how long? How much longer is this going to go on? And I got probably at least through the end of this week. I'm still going to be in resting mode. And then this idea came to me. Um, it was probably about a year ago. I took a two-week vacation from my job. And I recognize, because normally I don't take two weeks, normally I take one, the the refreshing that I got after two weeks was so significantly better than any of the times I take one week. Oh, sure. And my inner being was, was kind of reminding me of for me because of how I use my brain, because of how I tap my adrenal glands, because of the way I think I really required two weeks off to just get my body, my mind, and my whole being restored. And I'm like, wow, I had a lot of friends at my job ask me, so are you going to take a vacation or what are you going to do? I'm like, oh, no, I don't need to take a vacation because I'm thinking of work from home. You know, what's a vacation? But you know what? I'm getting the feedback from my body. Yeah, I'm kind of needing a two-week vacation. Well, Louise had very much the same kind of experience um, way back in the early stages of our relationship. She had been a psychotherapist for about 10 years, and she was getting kind of burned out with it. And at the time, I was not self-employed. I was still, it was my last W-2 job. And I was making pretty good money at the time. So I told her, well, I I had a condo um, that I needed to sell. I said, once I sell the condo, quit your job and then just do whatever you want. And I won't go into the whole story because I've told that story before. But the key point I want to make here is that when she told her coworkers that she was quitting, they asked her, well, what are you going to do next? She said, I think I'll just take some naps. And the response was, oh, that sounds so nice. (laughs) (laughs) They were so envious of it. And I think that points to the fact that anytime we go through a major life transition of of some kind, and leaving a job being one of them, there is a withdrawal period. And I think even at like the cellular level, we all recognize it. We may not know it consciously, But we know that it's there. I think that's what they were really reacting to when they said, oh, that sounds so nice. And I am recognizing something I hadn't given myself credit for before or or the allowance was 
I'm in a transition. You are. I guess mentally I'm like, all right, I quit. I, I transitioned so long preparing for that. It's like now I'm into the new <laughs> thing. And I'm just getting this awareness that I have the luxury of taking the time to let my whole being be restored so I can be that much more ready. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've learned through my life experience that when I try to do something, but I'm not fully aligned or I'm really tired, I don't get great results. As a matter of fact, my time would have been better served by not doing it <laughs> and waiting until I am in a good place and then go, you know, full force because I love to do that. Right. Yeah. And so um, where I was saying I have this feeling I've never had before, I've because it feels so unfamiliar and it's in such an uncharted area for me, I'm constantly checking in for inner guidance. Just like, just want to make sure, is it really okay? What's going <laughs> on? And my inner being has been giving me wonderful memories to give me the messages I need. And one of them had to do with a time when I was, I was self-employed. And if I would go for, let's say, three, four weeks without income, I was in a state of panic continually. And I was always like, what do I need to do in order to create income? And I remember thinking once the income would show up, you know, I got another job, you know, another freelance gig. And so I knew money was on its way. I remember having the thought, man, if I knew in advance there was nothing to really worry about. And I could have taken this four weeks where I had no work as well as no income to just relax mm -hmm. and do fun things. Yeah. Wow. That would be the best case scenario I could ever think of. Guess what? And that, was, that, <laughs> that was the memory that came to me, which is my inner being basically was saying to me, hey, we know where the income's coming from and we know when it's coming. And that is not for your concern because that's our job, not yours. And so enjoy your time off. Mm. Really? Nice. That, that is a feeling I've never had. I can enjoy my time off without being concerned about where the next income is coming from because I have, I've delegated that. My inner being is like, got it covered. Don't need your involvement right now. I'm like, wow. You've, you've really That's achieved a cool. tremendous level of trust is what you've done. You, you, I think the, the biggest difficulty all of us have when we are, first of all, recognizing and, and understanding that we are here to be deliberate creators because we've, we basically have absorbed and, and agreed with what, what Abraham has told us. Mm -hmm. And we start from that position and then we say, okay, now I'm going to start deliberately creating. And then we doubt and we tr distrust. We don't trust it completely. And it, it's like this ongoing thing, trying to learn how to trust. You've gotten to the point where you have really learned to trust. You trust it completely. You trust that the universe has your back. You trust that the inner being has your back. You trust that the most important thing from most people's perspective, you know, having the money coming in, having the food on the table, having the, the roof over the head, that the inner being is taking care of all of that for you. You've, you've learned to trust that completely. And that's a tremendous achievement. It is. And and, it's, and that's something really that I celebrate now on a very regular basis. You should. That's and, great. Um, and I will tell you, it didn't just happen. What we are just talked about, about me and what I've now achieved, that had been a desire for me. That was on my want list. Mm -hmm. I want to trust my inner being in the universe so completely that I no longer require evidence to believe in something. Right. And I do know, and I think I shared it on the last show, I know I no longer require evidence because I don't. And yet that had been my foothold for so long. Mm -hmm. Unless I see a, just a glimmer of something, oh, yeah. I, I had a hard time being 100% all in. Oh, sure. I, I'm still there. I'm still in that spot. I mean, I'm getting better at it, but... I, I mean, that's one reason I like the way you started off the podcast today, talking about uh, the idea that everything's always working out for me and re helping me reinforce it for myself. I do believe you're right. I do believe that is the way to get to the point where you do have the total trust because you've done it. I mean, you, you're the evidence. 
So yeah, that seems to be the right way to go. And I know that I have a ways to go, but on the other hand, I know I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer and closer. I'm gaining, and I'm gaining know, trust ground. Cool. And, you know, doing it on little things that aren't the end of the world is to me the best place to practice. So, you know, in my world, have I had flat tires before? Of course. I mean, of course. Anybody who drives a car as many years as I have, you have a flat tire here and there and yonder. It happens. And so, you know, if, and I'm saying this for somebody who maybe is wanting to just test this out for themselves. So if you know you've had a flat tire and you find yourself in the position of having a flat tire, recognize, you know what, somehow something always happens so that the tire is not forever flat. Because... I'm, I'm still driving, which means somehow the money showed up, somehow somebody transported me, or somebody came and changed my flat tire. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get a flat tire changed, fixed, and handled. But if you look at it over a course of a lifetime, it's probably happened many times. But, you know, if you think about the first time I got a flat tire, I was probably 19 years old. Well, obviously, since I'm not 19 anymore and I still drive a car, somehow that tire situation got resolved. And so if you're looking at it from how do I do this thing, start looking on past successes. And so a long time ago, and I'd said this is maybe 10 years ago, that's when I got to the point, you know what, things always, and I didn't have the phrase, everything's always working out for me. But I did recognize whenever I had a car problem, the most miraculous circumstances showed up to help me or fix my situation. And so it might be because I, I have AAA. It might be because some passerby or just happened to say, hey, can I help you? And I've had many of those. Um, it could be that I just happened to have left the house, called my husband, and boom, he was on his way and he took care of it for me. But somehow, some way, things always get resolved. And if we don't have a memory bank of those, we can somehow put ourselves in the situation that, boom, if you get a flat tire, you think it's the end of the world. But instead of going, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Go, you know what? I've had lots of flat tires in my life. And I've got all of them fixed. And they all got paid for. Things always are working out. So why would this be any different? That was really the thought process that I've had in multiple areas of my life that helped to get me to where I am today, is I started thinking about my past and how things somehow got taken care of in all sorts of ways. Even if I couldn't get a, you know, like if I was in a money struggle, didn't know how I was going to pay the rent, you know, instead of freaking out, I go, you know what, I've been behind on the rent before. And somehow it all managed to work out. Somehow I ended up with the money. It might have been three days after the fact that I had to pay a penalty, but the rent got paid. Mm -hmm. And so every time something of a negative nature shows up, I go into my memory bank. And sometimes I'll ask my inner being, show me where this has been a no brainer before, where this has been resolved before so that I can re rely on that somehow I'm always taking care, I'm always being taken care of. There's always something to come to my rescue. I always end up with the resources necessary for whatever it is I'm going through. There's really nothing that's the end of the world. And I mean, that even includes people dying. I've had people die. And the first time it ever happened, I thought it was going to take my life too. It was so excruciatingly emotionally painful. Well, now I've had many people in my life die. And you know what? I got through them all. And I will continue to get through them all. So whatever thing is going on, no matter how, how inconsequential or how consequential something is, most likely, unless you're just starting out and you're two years old, you probably have a memory bank that will let you know of how things have uh, been handled on your behalf and mm -hmm. how you've been able to get through things. But sometimes we don't let ourselves remember that we just think whatever's in front of us is the worst possible case scenario but it's not we have resources that are abundant well plus what's really interesting and <clears throat> i would say noteworthy about the approach that you're using with this idea of everything is always working out for me is that 
you're taking it, not only are you uh, taking it to the point where you're trusting in it, and that alone is magnificent, but you're also taking it to the point where it is your counter or your um, alternative response in those situations where one could say other people might uh, react not as well to. Like, for instance, having to spend money to buy that tire or having to waste the time to go to the, the place in the first place in order to get the tire done or, you know, any of a number of things that people could perceive as being a negative. With the philosophy right. that you have associated with your, your affirmation, all of those situations get turned into positives, which is, that's, that, I don't know yeah. if I can, I don't know if I can truly describe how much of an accomplishment that is. I mean, think about the people well, who have, at various times in their lives, they've, you know, and, and I think almost all of us have probably done this. We've gotten to a point where we're depressed, we're really feeling down, and when we're in that spot, we can't even see what joy looks like. We can't even see right. what happy feels like. It's just, it's just outside of our range. And, and the idea of, well, try to make yourself feel better, try to, try to feel happy in this place and, and change your thinking around, it seems impossible. You have found a right. way to make the impossible possible. I'm just really impressed by that. And have I been depressed in my life? Yes. Have I been financially distraught? Yes. Have I been jobless and practically homeless? Yes. Um, have I been carless? Yes. I've had all sorts of negative things occur in my life. And and I don't say this to go, well, I, I just say it to let people know who maybe listen you know, to the podcast with me on a regular basis. It's not like my life has always been where it is today. But I have, every time I had an uncomfortable situation, I was shooting off a rocket of desire with such great intensity to have something better in my life. When I was on the edge of having, being almost homeless, I desired that I would never want for a roof over my head again. When I did not have a job and I had zero income and I was living hand to mouth at the mercy of other people helping me, my desire was that I would never be in that position again, that I would always have my financial needs more than taken care of, which today I went and paid for a tire. It cost a lot of money, but I didn't even blink because I had the money resources. Um, there was a time that like my engine blew up and I had no car. And I was driving my husband's car, and then that engine blew up, and now oh, we had oh. no vehicle. Oh dear! So let's talk about what I did, what my des rocket of desire was then. Yeah, all right. It was that I would always have transportation available to me, and you know, like my my little sister, she has two vehicles. You know, when her husband passed away, he had just purchased a truck, and so she now has two. And everybody looked at her and said, "You know what? You should probably sell the truck." just for financial reasons. And she asked me about it and we both felt she needed to keep that truck. As a single woman, there was great comfort in knowing that if one vehicle didn't work, she had another one. Sure. Cause she lives kind of yeah. out in the boondocks and there, you know, there'd be nobody at four in the morning when she's getting ready to go to work to like give her a lift. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, there's such, there was just such a peacefulness in having two it's a backup. And I recognize what that's like for me because there have been really some uncomfortable things in my life. And I cried a lot and I was depressed a lot. But you know what? Every time I experienced something like that, the universe recognized what my preference was. And so I feel like today I'm living the culmination of so many of my preferences. One, because my preferences were the asking. You know, my negative situations caused me to do the asking. But then my job was to learn how to line up with that which I wanted and mm. stop focusing on what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. That's been my work. That's the part that I celebrate because, thank goodness, I did my work. You did. But the totally. asking, I didn't have to do much asking. When you're desperate, you're doing all sorts of asking. That It's outside of your awareness, but all sorts of asking is going on. So all sorts of cool stuff's being put in your vortex, just ready for you to line up with it. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's very cool. And I'm, I'm pleased today to to have the awareness that I'm lined up with so many of the asks that I've had, 
but it's not like I was born with a silver spoon. You know, I grew up in, in middle class America where we were in debt. We were always in debt. That's all I ever knew growing up was being in debt. All I knew was my parents fighting about money. You know, so, yeah, I had a huge desire to not have fights about money. <laughs> I had yeah. a huge desire to earn enough money so that that would not be the prevalent conversation as husband and wife. Because that was the prevalent conversation between my parents. Mm -hmm. At least sure. that's what I was aware of. Yeah. You know, so... All of the uncomfortable situations I grew up in, and even in my early 20s and 30s and 40s, they have all, every one of them created a giant ask. And the more I repeated the same kind of thing, the bigger the ask in that particular area of life became. And so now it's like, finally, when I, when I connected with Law of Attraction, I went, oh, there's a way to take all the stuff I've asked for and finally figure out how to get it? This is cool. <laughs> it wasn't always easy, but I did the work. And I've done a lot of it. And the funniest part is that the work that you did had more to do with not doing work than anything else. It had to do with letting the universe <laughs> take over. Isn't that strange? Isn't that cool? <laughs> it, it, it's true, but it's so strange because we expect, we're doers, right? We expect that we have to do our way out of it. And yet, that's not the answer. <laughs> No, we really, we really need to think our way. Yeah, really. Not out yeah. of it, but through it, and to that which we really desire. It's all. A, it's a thinking game. It's a thinking game. It's also a listening game, which is my way of segueing over to uh, the idea that for our listeners, if you if you've been listening for a while and you're enjoying the shows, we're asking you over the last few weeks, we've been asking you to post on your favorite social media channel how much you're enjoying it, and to include the phrase LOA Today dot net in your post because that helps to get more and more people uh, knowing about the show, finding out. And it's working. People, more and more people are finding out about the show. So thank you to those of you who have done it. And if you have done it, do it again. And if you haven't done it, please do it. Just post something, anything, preferably nice about us, <laughs> but something about LOAToday.net so that more and more people can find out about it. And if you're new to, this, to uh, the podcast, maybe this is your first episode you've ever heard and you like it. Well, I'm sure you like it because you're still listening an hour later. So if you like it, take the moment and subscribe. Go right to the homepage. Again, LOAToday.net. You'll see the instructions on how to do it. Or you can just go through your iPhone or your Android. Just go to either the podcast software built into your iPhone or the, pl the Play Store and download a podcast manager and go through through that and just do a search on LOA today and you'll find a way to subscribe through that. But whatever way you do it, do take a moment to subscribe and share the fact that you've subscribed. Just want to make sure I get that in there because I, I always have to wait to the last second to do it. And this time I want to get it well, like, you know, two minutes early. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what? I'll, I'll make this note. I've noticed, Walt, that you have now been posting to LinkedIn because I've been seeing it on my LinkedIn newsfeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's um, right. I got LinkedIn there. I got LinkedIn to LinkedIn. <laughs> So if you're listening and you're on LinkedIn, send a connection to Walt Thiessen. Yeah. If you're within, you know, you have to kind of be within a, so many connections. But if you can get connected to Walt, then the fact that he posts this every day, they will automatically be in your newsfeed. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, plus you could also connect to Wendy because Wendy's connected to everybody. So <laughs> you're connected <laughs> to Wendy. <laughs> I have a big LinkedIn connection, so if you want to connect with me um, and then connect with Walt, you certainly can. <laughs> I, I mean, I found that being connected to Wendy is one of the best things I ever did because all of a sudden I have access to all these people I never saw before. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, since last week, I think I have added over 600 people. To Whoa! My oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. It's pretty awesome. Of course, there are other people who may not have uh, LinkedIn as an account, but they can still reach out to you for a little coaching help. How do they reach out for you for that? They can check me out at my website, which is wendydillard.com. There it is, in a nutshell. Well, as usual, we didn't have a topic going in, but we have a topic coming out, and it was fun, and it was educational. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time. I'm looking forward to talking to you again on Thursday. You got it. I'll be here. And we hope that uh, you'll join us next time, too, here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye for now.